On December 1st, 2012, tragedy would strike the NFL community as news broke out about the murder-suicide of Kansas City Chiefs linebacker Javon Belcher. In the aftermath of the nearly unfathomable events in Kansas City. As tens of millions of Americans watched football this weekend, it was hard to escape that headline. Kansas City, where the linebacker Jovan Belcher was supposed to be taking the field today for the Chiefs. It was a day of shocking grief in the NFL on that Sunday as the Kansas City Chiefs took to the field without one of their teammates. News broke out the day before that Javon Belcher fatally shot his girlfriend and mother of his three-month-old daughter before finally taking his own life at the Chiefs' practice facility. And as family and friends were left with heartbreak and unanswered questions, the decision to play on caused some controversy with both the football community and its fans. In this video, we're going to take a brief look at the life and career of Javon Belcher and the events that transpired and possibly led to this tragedy. Growing up in West Babylon, New York on Long Island, Javon Belcher played college ball at the University of Maine. At Maine, he played as an outside linebacker and was fourth on the team in tackles after two seasons, registering 58 tackles as a freshman and 52 as a sophomore in 2006. As a student, Belcher excelled in academics throughout high school and college and graduated from Maine with a degree in child development and family relations. Upon entering the 2009 NFL Draft, Belcher was projected by Sports Illustrated as a sixth round pick, but after going undrafted, the linebacker signed a free agent contract with the Kansas City Chiefs in March of 2009. And as a rookie, he played in every game and started in three. With 33 tackles and two assists under his belt in his rookie campaign, the Chiefs finished 4-12 for last place in the AFC West Division. After much hard work and perseverance in the following offseason, Belcher became a regular starter in 2010 where he recorded 53 tackles and 31 assists. That season, the 10-6 Chiefs reached the playoffs only to lose to the Baltimore Ravens in the wildcard round. And in 2011, Belcher continued as a starting linebacker and eventually re-signed a one-year deal with the Chiefs. During his time in Kansas City, Belcher was the type of player you barely heard from. At 228 pounds, he was considered somewhat undersized for a linebacker, but made up for it with his tackling and heavy hits down the middle. Being undrafted, he was still a solid player, but perhaps overshadowed by others on the team such as Derek Johnson, Tom Bahali, and Justin Houston. By late 2012, Javon was an established starter on the team and was living with his girlfriend Cassandra Perkins and their three-month-old daughter Zoe. Belcher was introduced to Perkins through former Chiefs running back Jamal Charles, whose wife was cousins with Perkins. During the time they were together, the pair had a very tumultuous relationship where they argued frequently, but just like any other ordinary couple after a fight, they would always manage to reconcile. However, over a period of time, these arguments can take a heavy toll on a relationship and according to reports, there was actually another girlfriend Belcher had on the side. And on November 30th, 2012, Cassandra and Javon got into a heated argument hours before on the night Perkins returned home at 1am from a concert. Later that morning, Javon was found in his car asleep while parked in front of his girlfriend's apartment. After a 911 call about a suspicious person in the car, police found him there at 2.50 a.m. early that Saturday morning. Belcher told officers he was just waiting on his girlfriend and the police, after finding nothing suspicious, urged Belcher to leave the premise. How are we doing tonight, man? The first video is from a little after 3 in the morning on December 1st. A police officer pulls behind Belcher and later the football player can be seen leaving his vehicle and heading into an apartment complex. Throughout it, Belcher is cooperative and thanks the officers as he leaves. After returning home at around 7 a.m., Perkins and Belcher would continue their heated verbal exchange and this is where during the ensuing argument, Belcher pulled out a handgun and reportedly killed Cassandra while his own mother Cheryl Shepard was in the house. After taking off, Belcher's mother in a frantic 911 call would explain to the dispatcher what just happened. And during the communication, you could hear the trauma Cheryl was going through as her son had just shot her daughter-in-law nine times. Okay, right now she awake? Stop, what's with me? The ambulance is on the way, you hear me? 
You hear me? Cassandra, hey, stay with me. Okay, listen, ma'am, is she awake? She's barely, she's just barely Can you hear what you're saying? Yes, she's moving when I talk to her. Okay. Oh, God. Is she bleeding? Yes, she is. Where is she bleeding from? I can't tell her in the back, it looks like. Okay, well, we don't want to go ahead. Go ahead, Kitty. Where is your son at? Meanwhile, Javon Belcher immediately drove off in his Bentley towards the Chiefs practice facility next to Arrowhead Stadium. In the parking lot, he encountered Chiefs GM Scott Pioli with a handgun aimed at his head and proceeded to confess to Pioli that he had just murdered his girlfriend and thanked Pioli and the organization for taking a chance on him. He then pleaded for him, along with Chiefs owner Clark Hunt, to take care of his baby daughter and requested for the presence of Chiefs head coach Romeo Cornell and linebacker coach Gary Gibbs. Shortly after both coaches arrived, Javon would go on to tell them, You know that I've been having some major problems at home with my girlfriend. I needed help. I wasn't able to get enough help. I appreciate everything you have done for me with trying to help, but it wasn't enough. I've hurt my girlfriend already and I can't go back now. Despite pleas to put the gun down, Javon continued to hold it to his head and moments later as police were dispatched, the sound of the siren could be heard and this is when Javon Belcher told the three men he had to do it. And after kneeling down by a car, he shot himself in the head. Now I recall this tragic day when I heard it all over the news and it was just so surreal. Think about what must have been going through Javon's head the moment before pulling the trigger and everything leading up to that. This sounded like a troubled kid who needed serious help, and I'm not condoning what he did, but it seems very clear that Javon Belcher was in a dark place in his life. Then you have the vantage point from the chief staff who actually just witnessed one of their own players confess to a murder and commit suicide right in front of them. Now the timing of this tragedy couldn't have come at a worse time for the league as there was a full schedule slated for the next day. And while many wondered if the Chiefs matchup against the Panthers would be rescheduled, the Chiefs, after long discussions with the league office, decided it was best to proceed with the game. There was a moment of silence and tears from Belcher's teammates at Arrowhead Stadium prior to kickoff. While many Chiefs players didn't have much time to fully grieve the loss of their teammate, the Chiefs were still able to come away with a 27-21 home win. And after the game, you can clearly see how much the players had to endure before and during the game and it really took a toll on them as many players showed their emotion after the final whistle. While days after the incident, many reports rose as to what led to this tragic event as Belcher had no history of domestic V. While at Maine, Javon was actually a member of the Male Athletes Against Violence Initiative. This was a group where student athletes that signed up would educate themselves on issues against domestic V. And this is what makes this whole situation even more puzzling because here was a guy who seemed to be living his dream, playing in the NFL with a newborn baby. It makes you wonder what would drive a man to commit these heinous acts. It was also noted that the Chiefs organization were well aware of the problems the couple were having and provided counseling. Coach Romeo Cornell stated that Javon was struggling with personal issues that everyone faces daily and that he could not detect any other major issues. During the police investigation, Belcher's mother, Cheryl Shepard, said she had heard the couple arguing the morning around 8 a.m. with Javon telling Perkins, you can't talk to me like that. Shepard ran to see what happened after she heard the gunshots and saw her son apologize to Perkins and kiss his soon-to-be three-month-old daughter farewell and drove off. Kansas City Police Sergeant Richard Sharp believed that Javon had turned suicidal during the five-mile trip to the team's practice facility and stated that he had probably realized he had done something and he couldn't go back. Later on, more details would arise in this case claiming that Javon had texted his other girlfriend weeks before saying he would shoot Cassandra Perkins if she did not leave him alone. After an autopsy, toxicology reports show that Belcher was drunk at the time of the murder as his blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. And this ultimately brings us back to hours before the shooting when police questioned Javon while asleep in his vehicle. As mentioned earlier, local police stated that the football player was cooperative and did not seem intoxicated when questioned. While many felt that the officers had simply given the star a break because of who he was, if this was actually the case, this could have prevented two unnecessary deaths that day. Over a year after this tragedy, according to a neuropathologist, Belcher's brain showed signs of pervasive brain damage like that found in other deceased NFL players before him. Basically, he was suffering from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as CTE, 
a neurodegenerative disease linked to dementia, memory loss, and depression. And as part of the NFL collective bargaining agreement, this led to Javon Belcher's daughter, Zoe, to be entitled to at least $1.2 million from the NFL Foundation. In the end, this was a very tragic and shocking day for the NFL community and especially for the Kansas City Chiefs organization, as it appears there was no clear-cut signals with Javon Belcher. He had relationship issues just like everyone else, and it's hard to pinpoint one specific thing to go back on that should have raised some red flags, but one thing is for certain, Javon Belcher was a soul who seemed in desperate need of help. And this is no way mitigating his actions that day, as many lives were affected from this horrific incident, and one in particular is that of Zoe, who lost both of her parents.